everybody welcome back to the homestead it is an absolutely beautiful day out today 63 degrees today december 23rd what an awesome opportunity to work outside yeah this is a, a just a gorgeous day we don't we do get a few days like this sprinkled into our winters here in southern missouri and we try to take full advantage of them so today we're back at it working on setting up our second greenhouse. Now for the past two years we've had one greenhouse which is right behind us and we use that primarily for starting our spring plants not only for our gardens but we also sell a lot of plant starts at our local farmers market. So we decided last summer that we really wanted to have a second greenhouse that we could have raised beds in and be able to do container gardening in throughout the winter. Now, we could do a little bit in our current greenhouse, but because of the overlap in time, when we need to start plants for the spring, it just wasn't gonna work out. The timing just wasn't gonna work out right, and it's gonna be much better to have the second greenhouse where we can just focus on growing our food in that greenhouse. Right, all spring and into the early part of the summer, this greenhouse beside me is actually filled completely with plants. We've right. got tables uh, on the sides, down the middle, in the back. So there's really no room for raised beds and the containers that we would need to grow. Right. So we're going to get back to work on this one today. If you missed the last video, uh, go back and check that out. I showed you guys how to kind of get your site ready for the greenhouse, how to locate where your corner posts are going to go, and how to figure out exactly where they should go so that they're nice and square. Now we bought this greenhouse as a kit. We bought it online through growersolution.com and it's affordable and the kits are easy enough that just Kevin and I will be able to put it together just by ourselves. So we already drove in the four corner posts or earlier today and now we're going to get to work on the next step. Let's walk over and we'll show you what that is. So this is going to be the front of the greenhouse. Now our greenhouse that we're putting up right now is going to be 16 feet by 32 feet. So the front of the greenhouse will be here. You can see that we've already put in the two corners here and we've actually put in the two corners at the back. You can see this string running across here. This was to help us level these two posts. So our ground isn't real even here, but we need the greenhouse to be level. So on this side, we actually drove the posts in about 24 inches into the ground. And on that side, they're actually in about 30 inches into the ground. And that way, it'll be nice and level side to side. But we'll explain more of that to you later on in the process when we start putting in all of the side posts as well. Because we need to get this thing to be level side to side, and we need it to turn out right front to back as well. So we'll show you all of that as we move along. So before we put in the rest of the posts that will line both of the long sides of the greenhouse, we're actually gonna put down a ground cover on the ground around the perimeter of the greenhouse so that we won't get so many weeds creeping in. Now we have ground cover in our other greenhouse and it works great, but we didn't put it underneath the poles when we first built the greenhouse. And that means that weeds creep in from outside and grow up on the inside of, inside of our greenhouse. And we don't want that to happen this time. So we're preventing that this year. So we're gonna be aligning this now with this woven ground cover. We're gonna start with the three foot uh, wide section and then we're going to get some wider stuff around the inside now this is the same material that we use in our gardens in the big in-ground gardens which is fabulous you guys this is like a lifesaver makes gardening so easy you can also get this from uh, growersolution.com anyway so we're going to be putting this down we'll show you as we go along it's going to make things so nice when we have it all done so the first thing we're going to do is roll out a section of this three foot ground cover. We're going to roll it just next to the poles so that we can kind of figure out where to burn a hole in it so we can slip it over the poles that we already have in. Then we'll attach it to the ground and we'll be able to mark where our next poles go. All 
right, now that we have the ground cover cut, we're just gonna make a hole here about the size of this pole. Don't wanna leave it too much bigger than the pole or you'll just get weeds growing up right there. So we'll just make a little hole and now we'll go down to the other side and we'll make a hole there as well. All right. Light the grass on fire. <laughs> All right, so now we'll each take an end of the uh, weed fabric and we'll just slide it over and then we'll be able to staple it down. All right, that worked out perfectly. So now we'll have about 18 inches of this ground cover on the outside of the greenhouse and about 18 inches on the inside. And then again, the, eventually the entire inside of the greenhouse is gonna be covered with this and we'll build our raised beds on top of this. So now we're just gonna take these heavy duty six inch uh, staples and we're just gonna secure this all down and then we'll get ready to move on to the next piece. Well, we had a good day off for Christmas, but today it's time to get back to work. So we're gonna show you guys where we left off on the greenhouse project and talk to you about what we're hoping to accomplish yet today. It's another gorgeous day here in the Ozarks. It's actually such a gorgeous day that everybody's working outside. We actually, our neighbors across the way are loading up their cattle. So if you hear people over there or cows mooing, uh, it's not our cow, Hope, she's all fine, but it's their cows over there, their trucks and <laughs> yelling to you know do this that and the other thing so but we're gonna get back to work just like Kevin said but at the end of the day the other day we finished with putting the ground cover uh, completely over this area where the greenhouse is gonna sit on right originally we were just gonna do around the edges for now but then we realized that we had enough of the ground cover here without having to go out and buy more that we just decided to finish it all up before we even start building the greenhouse. It's gonna be a lot easier to build, you know, to put all this down before we have to work around the frame and everything. So now this area is completely covered up and ready to start building. The next step is for us to put the uh, side poles in. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be working on first. Right, the first thing we need to do is run a piece of uh, rope from corner to corner so that we can make a nice straight line. We'll spray paint that on, use our torch to melt the holes through the plastic, and then we'll get ready to start pounding in the poles. So now that we have the all those holes marked for the for the side posts, it's time to figure out exactly how far we need to pound them in. Now, when you're building one of these greenhouse kits, there's two ways that you can do this. There's two separate ways to kind of level the greenhouse. You can either build up your ground or make sure that your ground is perfectly level. If you're lucky, you'll have a nice level piece of ground, but we're not that lucky here in the Ozarks. We have a lot of hills. Our entire property is pretty much on a slope. So instead of leveling the ground, we're actually going to build the greenhouse to the slope of the land. This is what we did with the first greenhouse and we're very happy with it. And it's actually, I think, the better way to do it because you're not having to build anything up or tear or dig down for anything. 
So our greenhouse will be level side to side, but as far as front to back, it'll follow the natural slope of our property. The first thing we need to do is level these two poles at the front of the greenhouse, the two corners, and the same thing on the back. So I've already tied a piece of uh, string here real tight between the two poles, and I'm gonna hang what's called a line level on this piece of string. And then that will show us where a level mark is between our two poles. And this is actually pretty much right on where I tied the pieces of string. You can see that the level is right in the middle, so that's good. So now we have a decision to make. You can see that on this pole, the rope is, or the piece of string is down, you know, a few inches. We could either pound this in further or we can just cut the post off right there. We'll most likely opt for cutting some off because when we used our post driver, it did bend the top of the pole a little bit. So we'll cut some off so that we get a nice flat surface on the top of the pole. All right, so now that we have a level line here at the back and, and at the front, we know where our poles are level, so we know where, our, where we'll need to cut these poles off. So now what we'll do is we'll take another piece of string, we'll tie it from that level mark here to that level mark up there, and then that will show us exactly how deep to pound all of these poles along the way. So I'm just gonna tie this on here and run it up to the front. All right, so now that we have this string running the entire length of the greenhouse, this string follows the natural slope of the ground and that's exactly what we want. Now we'll just do the same thing on the other side and then it's time to start putting in all the poles. Well, there we go. So now that we have this all done, you can see exactly how big the greenhouse is going to be. And so now where this piece of string is, this will be the height of our roll up side. So it'll be just a little bit taller on this side than that side, but that's okay. That's how it should be when you're working with uneven ground. And for us, this is the absolute best way to do it. All right, let's move on to putting in the poles. <laughs> well, I wanted to show you guys something that I bought myself for Christmas this year. If you remember last winter, I actually had to have three hernias repaired. And since that time, I've learned a few things. And the number one thing that I've learned is that sometimes you need to work a little smarter instead of always working harder. So this last year when we built our cow pasture, I actually borrowed one of these gas powered post drivers from someone uh, that I know. And I was amazed at how well it worked here, even in our rocky ground in the Ozarks. So since that time, I've been saving my pennies, and this year, just before Christmas, I went out and I bought myself a gas-powered post driver, and we already used it to put in these corner posts, and it is amazing. I am so happy with the purchase of this. Uh, it makes putting in posts like this so much easier than pounding them in by hand. Uh, so this is gonna be a great tool to have here on the homestead. Well, that post driver is a huge time saver. We were able to get all of these driven in in about an hour, which is awesome. So now that these posts are in, the next step will be for us to mark right where this string is on all the posts. 
and then we'll take a sawzall and we'll cut these all off on that string and that way these posts will give us the exact lay of the land but for today that's where we're going to end this project and this video because we actually have to go deliver milk to one of our customers. So if you guys are enjoying our channel and you're not a subscriber yet, I sure hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you love the content that we put out and you think others would as well, the absolute best way that you can help us is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.